Oh, hey, you know, it's hot. Is it? It is. So what are you doing? I'm looking for rocks. You're looking for rocks? Is this one of them? No. Is this one? No. They're, they're huge stones. They're part of an ancient monastery. Oh, I know. I think I know just where to find them. Located in the northern part of California's Sacramento Valley, next to the sleepy little town of Vina, you will find the Abbey of New Clairvaux. It's about eight miles east of Interstate 5. Here, Cistercian monks, today commonly known as Trappists, are rebuilding part of the ancient Spanish monastery of Santa Maria de Ovila. Now you may be wondering how a Spanish monastery ended up in Northern California. Let us tell you the story. In the late 12th century, Cistercian monks built the Santa Maria de Ovila monastery near Madrid, Spain. It's kind of what you did in the 12th century. It was part of a chain of outposts constructed to keep territory recently recaptured from the Moors. And who were the Moors? You know, as a half Portuguese person, I'm glad you asked. The Moors were North African Muslims that ruled much of what is now Spain and Portugal for hundreds of years during the Middle Ages. They left behind some cool architecture, including the beautiful Alhambra in Grenada and the Giralda in Seville. Oh, I'd like to see those. Me too. But strangely, we can go see a replica of the Geralda next to a cheesecake factory in Kansas City, Missouri. Well, we'll have to add that to our list. Mm, yes, we will. I love cheesecake. We'll take our Kaiser Cordoba with Corinthian leather. <laughs> we don't actually have a Chrysler Cordoba. We have a Silverado, and we like that a lot better. Anyway, back to our story. In 1835, the Spanish government banned small monasteries and seized the property. The monastery was sold to a wealthy family who used the building for farm storage. By 1931, the monastery had fallen into disrepair. It was then the publishing giant William Randolph Hearst purchased and dismantled parts of the buildings, including the chapter house. You remember watching that old movie in high school, Citizen Kane? Yes. That was a portrayal of William Randolph Hearst. Isn't he the one who built Hearst Castle? Ah, Hearst Castle. That beautiful building. On that, that magnificent hilltop overlooking the Pacific Ocean. That must be one of the most wonderful places in all of California. You know, I've met people that haven't even been there. Okay, shouldn't we get back to the stones? Yeah, back to the stones. Hearst took great efforts to have the stones marked with codes for reassembly. He then had the stones put on 11 freighters and shipped across the Atlantic through the Panama Canal to California with plans to incorporate them into his vacation home, Wintoon, near Mount Shasta. It was at Wintoon that Phoebe Hearst, Hearst's mother, had built what could arguably be called the first Hearst Castle. Like so many other plans, the Great Depression forced Hearst to abandon his plan to use the stones at Wintoon, and in 1940 Hearst decided to give the monastery away. The government of Spanish dictator Francisco Franco requested that they be returned to Spain, but Hearst said, no thanks. Instead, he gave them to the city of San Francisco, on the understanding that the monastery buildings would be reconstructed as a museum in Golden Gate Park. Famed architect Julia Morgan laid out several possible plans for the museum, but this time World War II, money, and a few fires that destroyed most of the stones' reassembly instructions prevented the stones from ending up in Golden Gate Park. Well, most of the stones. You can still see a few of them scattered around the park. In 1955, Father Thomas X. Davis arrived in San Francisco to begin his assignment at a new monastery in Vina. Father Thomas resolved to bring the stones home to Cistercian soil and right the wrong that had been committed against the original buildings. And in 1994, Abbot Thomas Davis was finally successful in obtaining the sacred stones from the city of San Francisco. The Abbey of New Clairvaux agreed to begin reconstruction on the chapter house within 10 years and to make the building available to the public. 
In the years since, the monks of New Clairvaux have been working hard and making excellent progress on rebuilding the chapter house. There's something beautiful in the fact that after hundreds of years and a journey of thousands of miles, the stones have now found a new home in a Cistercian monastery. When visiting New Clairvaux, you can take a self-guided tour of this remarkable historic building, all while enjoying some quiet contemplation. Day visitors can also attend Mass. The Abbey has a nice little welcome center, gift shop, and bookstore. Did we mention wine? The monks of New Clairvaux have partnered with fifth generation California winemaker, Amy Sanceri, to create some wonderful award-winning wines. You can enjoy wine tastings in their beautiful wine tasting room, and of course, purchase some divine wines. If so inclined, the Abbey also offers overnight retreats. See their website for more information. Although the Abbey is open most days for viewing, check their website for details on hours. Unfortunately, there is no RV parking at the Abbey. There is some street parking in the town of Vina nearby. Check your Google Maps and plan your route. The monks love pets, but only ADA certified pets are allowed on the grounds. Sorry, Newton. Due to the quiet, contemplative nature of the monastery, picnics are not permitted on the grounds but there are a couple of great parks for picnics nearby. So if you're in Northern California, you may want to make a little detour to visit the Abbey of New Clairvaux. It's a really neat place. And you won't regret visiting the winery and the gift shop either. That wine we had at the monastery's tasting room was really good. It should be. The monks have been practicing winemaking for over a thousand years. Well, I'd say they've got the hang of it. Newton, go find subscribers. Good boy.